welcome and namaste. Today's flow is a hip and heart opening centered flow. Lots of back bending postures as well as postures that will help open up the hips and alleviate any tension or stuck energy there. When you are ready, we'll begin seated with a blanket and blocks handy for your use for practice. First and foremost, coming to a comfortable seat and assessing the seat itself. Noticing if you're placing more weight into one hip or the other. Taking a moment to readjust. Distributing weight evenly into both sits bones, both hips. Begin to tap into your breath. Feeling the fullness of the inhale. The emptiness of the exhale. Continually repeating the cycle, filling up. Emptying out. next few exhales, letting the breath come out through pursed lips, making a sound. And with each exhale, allowing yourself to melt. Relax into your being a little more. You can let the mouth close, pulling inhale and exhale through the nose. Place your hand onto the left heart, right hand to rest on the left. Checking in with this heart space, notice how you feel today. How does your breath feel like? How do your thoughts feel? How does your physical being feel? Simply noticing these things that are present. Take this moment here to release the need to edit or change any of these sensations, feelings. See if you can't allow yourself to be exactly as you are. Reminding yourself that your practice is just as worthy when you're sleepy, groggy, maybe kind of cranky as it is when you're feeling like a rock star.
when you are ready, place your hands in Anjali Mudra. And take note of why you are here on your mat this morning. What kind of intention you would like to set for today's practice. And with that intention in your heart, Keep it there, reflecting back to it frequently as you move. And slowly soften your head to your heart, sealing this intention, this sacred bond between you and you. Let the hands drop to the knees, drop the chin into the chest, stretching the back of the neck. Begin to draw right ear to right shoulder. Feel the stretch through the left part of the neck. And the tri- and guide the chin back down towards the chest, rolling through the double chin. <laughs> And bringing left ear to left shoulder, feeling the stretch through right side of the neck and the trap. Again, roll down, chin to chest. And back again, gently moving the neck. As you find this motion maybe concaving in a little as you roll, inhaling as you bring the ear to shoulder, puffing up chest. Eventually taking that head in full circles around, letting go completely. Maybe opening and closing the jaw, if you find you're clenching. And if you know that it's a habit of yours to clench the jaw, check in with that space a lot. Maybe it's not your jaw, maybe you clench your fists or your face. Maybe you clench your lower back and into the glutes. Whatever your tendency may be, wherever it is you feel you hold tension, try just to breathe into that space. Find stillness, reach both arms up overhead, look between the hands, exhale and bow forward. If there's anything in your way, feel free to move it. Take a breath, press into the hands, lift the chest halfway up. And then exhale, walk the hands farther forward. And take your next breath, walk the hands back into this yourself. Straighten the feet out, give your legs a little shake, and then switch the cross. It'll feel funky. Find that even seat. Reach up with the left arm and place it onto the space between the shoulder blades as far down as you are able to reach. Then once you've found that, place the head into that space of the arm and use the crown of the head to help straighten up, stretching out this bicep here. If you like, you are welcome to add your right hand onto the left elbow, assisting in the shoulder stretch. Reach both arms up. Reach them out wide and give them a good shake before coming to the other side. Right arm up, placing it in between the space of the shoulder blades. 
head presses into the crook of the arm to help straighten up and stretch it out. Left hand may come to right elbow if you'd like that assist. As we progress through the flow today, there may be spaces in the heart or the hips that offer a release. If that's the case, feel free to let out a clearing breath, just releasing whatever energy is asking to go. With an inhale, reach it out. Stretch the legs out in front of you one last time. Left knee bends, foot plants, and then the right leg slides underneath. Left knee to stack on top of the right. Feeling into the sensations in the hips. Let go of that need to have the knees perfectly stacked. This isn't about picture perfect perfection. This is about getting the most out of your practice, benefiting yourself. So if your knees don't stack, it's cool, mine don't either. If they do, more power to you. From the space here, you are welcome to stay as you are with your hands rested on your knees. However, if your hips are calling for maybe a bit deeper stretch, you may place the hands in front of the knees, slowly guiding the chest a little closer towards that left knee. This in any way starts to lift your hips off or you lose that contact with the ground, back off. Last breath wherever you are. Slowly press up, plant the hands behind you. Place the feet onto the mat and let the knees windshield wiper side to side. When you're ready, working to the other side, right foot plants. Left leg slides underneath as the right knee comes to sack somewhere around the left. We'll sit upright, nice and tall. And finding that comfortable space between effort and ease. Maintain the shape you are presently in or allow yourself to add to it. On an inhale, begin to press the hands into yourself. Place them behind you, plant the feet, and let them windshield wiper side to side. Let's set up onto the hands and the knees. Placing a blanket underneath the knees if you like the extra softness. Take a breath in. Reach the heart forward, let the belly dip. Widen the sits bones so that they go to the corners of the room and the tail can tilt a little bit higher. Take one more breath, reach the heart forward a little more, look up. Breathe in this time, 
Take as much air in as you can. And as you exhale, press it all out, chin into chest. Round the back, round the shoulders. As you breathe in, let the belly drop like a hammock, gaze forward. Exhale, press it back. As you press back this time, let your hips sink over the heels, lean your weight to the right and the left. And come back up through center, taking the blanket out from underneath your knees. Lower all the way down onto the belly, ensuring that the space behind you is clear. For the first few breaths, we'll take an open palmed sphinx pose. So coming onto the back, or the tops of the forearms, I guess, and the tops of the hands. Palms upwards, heart lifts. Elbows about shoulder width apart, playing with distance if you need. I'm definitely someone who is <laughs> prone to squeezing here in Cobra and Elk Dog and Sphinx too. So if you are like me, bring some awareness to the lower back and relax it, relax the belly, relax the hips. So it's just a very gentle back bend, warming you up for some of the deeper heart opening postures that we'll visit in this practice. to the palms underneath of the forearms, picking them up if you need to adjust. Peek over left shoulder, drawing the right forward, left back, and then bring the left forward, draw the right back as you look over the right shoulder. And back to neutral. Begin to bring the left knee up at hip height and off to the side in a frog shape. <laughs> the best way I know how to describe this. Begin to slide the forearms forward, making some more room for the chest to press down. Maybe even resting all the way onto ooh, forearms, placing forehead down. Slightly lift up, bringing this left knee back in line with the right, and placing right off to the side. into the hands, lift the chest slowly. Draw that right knee back by the left. Take a breath in and place the hands at the rib cage. Point the elbow straight backwards. Feel the shoulder blades slide onto the back. Take a breath in, press into the hips, the tops of the feet and the hands as you lift chest a little. Keep the glutes soft, exhale lower. And take a couple of these, inhale lift. Exhale, lower. Curl the toes, lift the hips, find your downward facing dog. Adjust what needs to be adjusted, hands, feet, pedal into them. And 
starting to play with movements. That feel good to the body. Walk the feet wide, the edges of the mat. Place right hand into the center, lift left arm up, and as you exhale, reach for the outer edge of the right leg, ankle, wherever you can find a grip. And take an inhale and switch your sides. Left hand to the center, right arm reaches for the outer edge, left leg. Come up slowly. And plant the hands shoulder width distance again. Walk the feet slightly in. Take a big breath, roll through plank. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, lift up, cobra. Exhale, press back, child's pose. Place the hands together, press into the elbows as you lift the hands off of the mat and above the head. Elbows stay connected. Lower the hands back to the mat. Bring them behind you. Interlacing your fingers behind the lower back. Take a firm clasp of the hands together. And as you inhale, start to press up onto the knees, rocking forward onto the crown of the head. And keep chin tucked into chest, not looking left or right. Keep reaching arms away from you. Mindfully lower, hands to lower back. Hips to heels. Roll onto the forehead and back up to your seat. Sit up onto the knees, grabbing a blanket, if you'd like to have it there. Curl toes underneath. And again, another really good tool to use is a block between the calves here. It's a great reminder for the legs to keep them active. Hands to the lower back here first. Big breath in. And as you exhale, keep drawing shoulders together, point the elbows backwards. Lift the heart. And if it feels comfortable, you may lay the head back. Keep lifting up out of the hips. Try not to crunch into the lower back. Lots of length through the body. Mindfully come on up. Uh, possibly that back bend could have been more than enough for you. If that's the case, stick with this. If you'd like to do a little bit more, however, be working into just a little deeper variation here. Big breath in, offer the heart. Exhale, lean back. Again, keeping weight out of the lower back, pulling up with the hips, pressing forward. If you feel comfortable, drop one hand to the heel. Maybe drop both. And keep looking forward, not to the left or right. Your next exhale, right hand to hip, left hand to hip, move the block. Sit onto the heels. And take a breath in, reach left arm up, plant it behind you. Gentle counter twist. 
And to the other side, up and over. Through the center, hands to heart. Pausing to reflect back at your intention. And so inhale, reach the arms up. Reach them out wide, find your way to your downward facing dog. Take your right ankle, cross it over top of the left thigh. Begin to shift forward, drawing the shin away from the thigh, planting it behind your wrists. So if your knee is in the same plane where your hip is, you're gonna have this weird kind of awkward lifted up left hip. And what we're working on here is squaring them. Keeping them almost as if they're between two imaginary panes of glass here. Blanket may be a great addition for you to fill in any gaps or spaces underneath this left hip here that may leave it feeling a bit prone or vulnerable. And then also take a look at this back leg. So mine's kind of funky, the toes sickling, kind of hanging out into this left hip here in the shoulder. Let's square the shoulders, the chest, the torso straight to the front. Roll onto the thigh and the knee so that it's directly on the top, not, you know, shifted to one side or the other. And then the toes are pointed straight back as well. Begin to walk the hands forward. Resting to forearms, a block, maybe all the way onto your chest if that feels like it's best for you. Sit up tall. If you'd like to create the bind, bend the back knee, reach hand for foot. And mindfully release. Curl the back toes underneath and start to walk the knee into you a little more. Press into the hands, lift this back leg up and press to your downward facing dog. Maybe shaking out legs if you need. Take a breath in, roll over the toes, find plank. Exhale, lower down. And exhale, find your downward facing dog once more. Left ankle over, right thigh. Notice the difference in your sides. And when you're ready, shifting forward, left knee behind left wrist and out wider than that hip. Place the blanket underneath this left hip if you like that on the other side, but know that you may not need it for this side. And if that's the case, you do whatever it is you need to do for your sides. They don't have to look the same. One last thing here, taking a look at this back leg, making sure it's as it should be. Before finding your way into your pigeon pose. into the hand.
Take the bind if you like. And come out slowly, walk this back leg in. Lift up, find your downward facing dog. Big breath in, fine plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, find downward dog. Look between the hands, take a journey to the top of the mat. A big breath in, halfway lift, exhale, release. A couple breaths here, ragdoll side to side. Stillness. So you breathe in, rise to stand, root into the feet, soften knees. Reach arms up overhead, bring the hands to the heart. Back to the intention. Heel to the feet wide. Pointing the toes out, heels slightly in. Sink the hips back into Malasana squat. If you'd like, block here is a great place for that tail to rest into. That helps give your spine that direction, upward energy pointing up and down versus needing to squat so low and then kind of concaving in here without a block. I'll take this setting that feels best for you. Lowest, middle or highest. Plant the elbows firmly into these little rainbows here the arches of thigh and calf. So you firmly press here. This gives you the reminder to let the knees press back and open. Should be doing this with the strength of the inner thigh muscles, but the elbows kind of help you too. Keep this nice and active core working, crown of the head reaching tall. By now you've either checked out or started to feel some really fiery thoughts towards this posture, maybe towards me. That's all good. <laughs> Breathe through it. Press your right hands out by right foot. Reach up with the left arm, remembering not to let this left knee fall in, keeping it active and open. Switch left hand down, right arm up. Slow release. Plant the hands, lift the hips slowly. Place your bra block in front of you. Pick up both heels, drop them to the left. And then to the right. Place right hand down onto the block. Reach up with the left arm as you bend right knee. Switch left hand down, bend the left knee. Reach up with the right arm. Inhale, rise to stand. Hook the thumbs together. Let the fingertips spread wide. Breathe in, reach the arms up, and as you exhale, lean to the left. And now come up to the center, exhale, lean to the right. Wrap your right arm over top of the left. Take a big inhale, lift up. As you exhale, fold, bend into the knees. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold. 
Last one, inhale. Exhale. Slowly release. And shake them out in a couple circles. And switch sides, left arm over, right. Wrapping them up, big breath in. Completely empty out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Place your weight into your right foot. Start to press the left foot behind you, flexing into the foot, knee points downward. Catch left foot with the hand. And if the spine isn't available, you're always welcome to use a yoga strap, scarf, or something to help you reach here. With your breath in, reach right arm up. And as you exhale, begin to tilt forward, keeping your hips squared so that you stay nice and stable. Keep kicking foot into hand, reaching forward with these right fingertip, evenly distributing weight onto your left foot. If you fall, it's okay. You can use your wall if you have one. Try to find a spot in front of you that's not moving something to gaze at. One more breath. If you'd like, you may fall, softening into the knee. Kick foot into hand, keep lifting. Release. Place the left foot to the back of the mat, find a lunge. Good, right foot to meet the left. Shift forward onto the tippy toes. Lower down to the knees. Inhale, lift. And exhale, find your downward dog. Inhale, gaze between the hands. Take a walk to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bow over the leg. Inhale, rise to stand. Now setting up for the other side. Take a moment to collect yourself. Begin to balance weight onto the left foot. Drawing the right foot behind you, flexing toes. Reach right hand for the foot. Or again, taking whatever prop you need to help you create the spine. Left arm reaches in front of you. Keep pressing foot into hand as you lean forward. Soften into that knee. Keep pressing foot into hand. Mindfully release. Come to a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, lower. Plant into the hands and as gracefully as possible. Find your way to the seat. Shake legs out. Shake your arms out too. Ooh, shake it all out. Please. Soles of the feet together with the knees spread to the side. Even if you are able to guide the heels a bit closer into yourself, for today's practice, we're just gonna let this be a nice widened diamond shape here. Now let's hook left foot into the seat a little and plant the right foot. Begin to wrap arm around the calf or ankle and 
then reach up and up with the left. Plant into the left hand. Rock up onto the left knee straight and right leg all the way up. And slowly lower back down, plant the foot. Switch your sides, right foot gets tucked in, left foot plants. Tiny little wrap here if you're able, reach out with the right. Plant right hand down, press up onto this left knee, straighten left leg out. Mindfully lower, replant the foot, come to your seat. Right ankle over top of left thigh. Let both left knee and connected right foot fall towards the left side. So that the right knee is pointing upwards left knee somewhere down towards the ground. Initially, you may feel kind of funny in the shoulders, but just take a second to readjust, walking left shoulder to the left side of the mat. And so long as it doesn't place any pain in the left knee, you can begin to walk the left foot a little closer into your heel. You can begin to walk the left foot a little closer towards your seat. And come up slowly. Switching the sides, left ankle over top of right thigh. Let the knee and foot fall towards right side. Plant both, adjust shoulders. And again, if you're able, walking this foot a little closer into the seat, taking a bind if you'd like. Come out slowly. Press into the hands, the feet, leaving the feet about hips width distance apart. Begin to walk the shoulders underneath the chest and slowly lift the hips up. Bend at the elbows, bringing the hands to the hips. It's creating a bit of a shelf here. Lower down slowly, using your hands to assist you. Broaden the shoulders, stretch the legs out. Left hand on to the heart, right hand on to the belly. these next few moments as you lay here to reflect on any bit of practice that resonated with you. Maybe it was a posture that made you feel really good, powerful. Maybe it was a feeling you were able to let go of. Softening the tension in the body. And 
bring yourself back to the intention that you set. Notice the ways in which you were able to honor this intention. Notice if your intention possibly shifted. Oftentimes, our intention can change. And finally, Ask yourself how you may be able to honor your intention once you've rolled up your mat and brought your practice into the world. Frequently, what we seek in practice it's also what we may be seeking within our own life too. Balance, restoration, comfort, softness, stability, discipline. And our practice on the mat goes hand in hand with the practice off the mat. And this will conclude today's practice. If you would like to stay where you are for Savasana, and rest in this space for as long as you'd like. And if this is where your asana ends today, thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope you enjoyed today's heart and hip opening flow. Namaste.